Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to Fujit's Blitz with me, Fujit. Hello. So we looked at uh, the worst performing tier nine light tank, the Batcha, and we've looked at the worst performing tier nine medium tank, the PTA. So now it's time to have our deep dive into the worst performing tier nine heavy tank, the British Conqueror. Hmm. Now I have always liked the Conqueror. It, it's Never been the easiest tank to play, but I never thought it was the worst. But Blitzstar says differently. Blitzstar apparently has this one down at a 48% win rate. That is actually significantly worse than the American M103. Again, I'm not looking at any premium tanks here. And contrary to popular belief, the ISA is not the worst performing tier 9 heavy tank. Now you can see here that this Conqueror struggles with survival. Why? Well, we'll get to that. Um, not many battles have been played in it, admittedly, slightly more than the uh, motion, but uh, only 458 battles. It has a damage per battle of approximately 1,357 and a kill rate of 0 0.6.13. But it's that survival rate that really brings it down. So let's jump in to its parameters. Let's have a look at its statistics and let's see if we can try and work out why the player base is not just not jalling with this particular tank. We've jumped back into the garage and now looking at parameters of uh, this tier nine heavy tank, the Conqueror. You can see hit points not too shabby, 2,296. Armor wise, well, the turret at the front is very nice, 178 millimeters, and the hull 135, uh, that's not so great. The sides of the turret, however, 106 and the rear 73, they're not too good. Hull, 53 and 40, again, not too good. View range, well, 279, I've got it with optics, so that's why that's increased a little bit, but it's not too bad considering this is a heavy tank. As for its camo and concealment, not great. I mean, stationary, 32%, moving, 27%, firing, 6%. It is, after all, a big, massive, lumbering heavy tank. If you've got all the top equipment loaded, then the day PM is 2,492, with a reload time of just over nine and a half seconds, 9.63 to be exact. So it's got pretty good DPM, and it's got a pretty decent reload time. Penetration, standard ammunition is AP, knocking out 272. APCR is its premium, 342, and HE, 187. I mean, that is, Fantastic, to be fair. 187 penetration on its HE is very, very nice indeed. Moving down to the damage, standard ammunition, you're going to be knocking out 400 high end alpha, APCR 340, HE 515. And with that HE, with having that penetration, it is pretty, pretty nice to play in that respect. Aim time, 2.8 seconds, just shy of three. Again, it is a big lumbering heavy, and you need to remember that. Dispersion, 0 0.303. That ain't too bad. Gun depression, well, it hasn't got great gun depression, only seven degrees and 15 degrees upwards. Speed, it's a slow heavy, but it's not that slow. 34 top speed going forwards, 12 going backwards with an average speed of 30. Pretty good power to weight ratio and its terrain crossing ability for a heavy isn't too bad. So with that in mind, with the fact that, you know, with all the top stuff loaded, why are so many people struggling in this tank? Well, there are umpteen reasons, but before we get into that, let's have a look at what I'm loading on this tank equipment wise. I'm running it with calibrated shells, which is why I'm getting that extra penetration. The reason I run it with calibrated shells is because the reload time is good enough. I don't need to put in that gun rammer. I'm then using the defense system because I always use the defense system. Then running the improved optics because I don't need a camo net. I am, after all, a heavy. And then using the enhanced gun laying device because the dispersion is good enough. It's got good enough velocity, so I don't need that supercharge. I'm then running it with the additional hit points. I could run it with the additional enhanced armor, giving me that extra 4%. And it's a toss up between those two. I'm just running it with the hit points because that's what I do. I've then got the improved, the engine accelerator rather than the improved control, running it with the vertical stab just to bring that aim time down because I don't need the refined gun, toolbox as standard, and the eye end consumables as standard. 
looking at the consumables, well, this tank comes with a few bits and bobs. At the moment, I've got the reactive armor, the repair, the multi restoration pack, and the adrenaline. But I do switch between the reactive armor, I've just been playing around with it recently, and the additional speed boost over this speed boost. Now, some players like to play it with the improved engine power boost, and it is very nice. It gets the tank to move lovely, but I'm just trying it at the moment with the reactive armor. It's it, it give or take. It's what you are comfortable with. I mean, for a long time I've played it with that super duper speed boost, but uh, I'm just giving it a bit of a bash. Provisions, well, I'm running the enhanced sandbag armor. It gives me an extra 6% to the tank, bringing up that uh, HP. I've then got the pudding and tea because I want my crew to be very, very good at what they do. And then I'm also running the protective kit because you do get a quite big chance of engine fires and stuff like that in this tank. So that's why I'm running it that way. Ammunition loadout, well, majority of my ammunition is AP. I've got 14, 11 APCR and 10 HE. Why 10 HE? Normally I carry five and a big lumbering heavy because this thing is a beast with the HE when it wants to be. So that's what we're looking at. Let's now have a look at some of the problems with this tank armor wise because there are some issues. This is what the tank looks like facing off against a E75, another heavy that it will face in tier nine. And as you can see, it's pretty wide open frontally. Um, and this is one of the problems that people struggle in this tank. It's an, it, it hasn't got the best of gun depression, it's got seven degrees, but you can use that seven and it does help you. So this is telling you that this tank is a ridgeline monster. Unfortunately, you do need to wiggle that turret because if you don't wiggle that turret, those cheeks are wide open and they're easy, penable shots. So that is the, the main game style of this tank. If you try to face off against it, you know, and you don't get up close and personal, then you're gonna have a problem because these plates are incredibly open. And this is the problem with this tank. A lot of new players jump into it thinking it's a big, big, super heavy, and therefore it's gonna have amazing armor when actually it just doesn't and then they come unstuck and then they wonder why is that person penning me how is that happening blah 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 so be mindful of that we're now going to jump into a couple of games let's have a look at the game style of this actual tank here we are in our not so little heavy tank the conqueror on the dutch map holland jack and i like going to the middle area here for a couple of reasons one Whilst it only has seven degrees of gun depression, you can get it onto a nice ridge line and you can get those cross shots over to where that A cap is. And you can already see that we have spotted up, or what well, we haven't, but the team have spotted up some of their light tanks, mainly that T92, and there's the T54. I'm always expecting their heavy tanks, however, to come up the other side. And without, you know, hurting us, they have come up the other side. So we're going to try and put some shots into this poor old object, but he goes behind a rock. Maybe we can get the T-54. I've got HE loaded, and it's a low roll. <laughs> now, the HE on this tank is very, very nice. In fact, it is lovely. But um, we, we are going to have some fun with it. I mean, that's an AP straight into the bottom plate of the E-100. We are pretty much on a limb here, me and my long-suffering teammate Ephelum. I'm going to try and track the E100. I don't only critically track him. We've done 1,200 damage. We're going to try and smack this 60 TP as well um, in the hope that he, yep, yeah, we get one into him. But now Ephelum is being rushed by the E100 and the FV. We are, well, in trouble here. I'm worried about the FV, so I want to put a shot into him, hoping that the E100 will put a shot into me, but... I get a shot from the E100 and the FV takes out my teammate. We've done just over 2,000 damage and the team has kind of collapsed and we're going to go down here, unfortunately. But you get to see what the tank can do in very quick time. We, we dished out 2,424 damage. That isn't too bad. We actually go on to win that game, um, mainly because we held our line and we whittled their big heavies down. I'm actually quite happy with that. I mean, we get a victory, we get some damage assist, we didn't destroy anything, we damaged four, we get a third class. We did some pretty decent damage, considering that we were sort of pushed. Um, but that's about, you know, we, we did okay. We lost a bit of credit because we got wrecked. 
But uh, you can see there we got third top damage. It was a tier 10 game. So I am relatively happy with that particular game. In this game, we're up tiered and we're rolling out on Yukon. And again, I'm with my long suffering Toon Mate. In here's Conqueror, Effa Lump. And what we're looking to do here is sort of dominate the middle of the map. Thankfully, those uh, lovely YouTubers out there have been telling everybody to go to the middle of the map. Uh, so that's what I'm expecting, to be honest with you, in this particular game. And as always, teams don't disappoint. Our team are already there. Our PTA is very, very forward. He's very aggressive and advanced. Their bat chat BC is coming in and he's a difficult tank. Let's see if we can put something into the IS. Yes, we can. We get a nice tracking shot there, but the bat chat does manage to uh, hit us. That's the Boresque, by the way. And this Leo is, well, he's in the cap, and you can see they're just lining up to be smacked realistically. We're not going to do massive damage in this game, but what I want to try and show you is how you can hold a line in a Conqueror. Now, admittedly, it's a tier 8, tier 9 battle. Not as hardcore as what we just had with tier 10. But the penetration of this tank is particularly nice. And with the nice penetration, with the nice reload, you can be a bully. You've got to be mindful that it's got very, very thin armor frontally. Um, but look at this for a shot. I mean, it's a beautiful gun. It really is, okay. It only knocks out 230 onto the WT there. But the shot itself is nice. And this is one of the glorious things about the Conqueror and most of the British tanks. They are incredibly accurate. Now, a lot of people don't think that, but they are. And again, just to prove it, oh, no, maybe not, not that time. <laughs> that was a complete enough to dim shot. But uh, here's the HE again. And watch this. I mean, it's a beautiful HE, this tank. 529 into the front of that AMX 50 So we've only done 1,500 damage, but we've been doing our job. We've been holding a position, holding a line, and farming where we can. We're going to snapshot the WZ, uh, the WT, sorry. We snap him out. I'm not going to steal poor old Ephelum's kill this time. I'm going to let him take it. And uh, that's a done deal, as far as I'm concerned. Admittedly, we only did 1,620. We only took one kill. We bounced 400. But it's enough to get us a third class. We we do our job, and that is the main thing. And as I keep telling you, it's not always about the big damages. It's not always about the ace masteries. It's about winning games. And winning games come in a majority of different formats. You know, you can do massive damage and win a game. You can carry the game, or you can just do your job and still have a good time. Everlump there getting the top damage. I came third. So you can see we weren't actually that shabby. Not really, and I'm happy with that. Moving now to Port Bay, a map that this tank really does like, because it does like those ridges, it likes being relatively hauled down, even though it's only got seven degrees of gun depression. And we're gonna push to the normal position by the sea cap. They take us off guard. Um, I've seen a lot of new strats on this one where people are now going to where the A cap is or into the actual port area or the town. And whilst that strat can work sometimes, it does put that it does put that enemy or that team in a disadvantage to an extent. And the disadvantage is if you've got this high ground over here, you can absolutely dominate, especially if you've got tank spotting for you, because you've got relatively good positions that you can throw shells across the map from. Now this poor old IS-5 here, I did say sorry to him in after the game because I'm just going to ammo rack him, just like that. Now I've never ammo racked an IS-5 before, so I was pretty chuffed about that. And I get 1300 damage, boom, straight off the bat, which is nice. Now I'm going to put one into this Type 68. Being farmed a little bit by the T-54 there, but he gets a bounce on the turret because I'm trying to angle up. But we've also got a tank over there in the IS-8. I'm going to pop around a game and you can see how dominant you can be from this part of the map if you go into the city. I mean, they've already lost two tanks. The Type 68 is going to go down. I know where the IS-8 is. I know where the 54 is. They are in a bad way. We've already done 1,200 damage, uh, 2,000 damage. Uh, the IS-8 is going to push on to me, and I'm just going to try and hug him a little bit. He's going to be able to pen me a little bit. I'm just trying to maneuver around here, get a bounce there, which I didn't really want. But... Uh, now I'm just going to try and aim for his engine deck. I'm not using HE at the moment. I'm just using AP. 
And you can see that, you know, we're having a relatively good time, 2,400 now. We should be able to take him out because he decided to shoot somebody else. There we go, just shy of 2,500. The object 252U and there's a, uh, a, an IS-6 is still left. The, the object's gone, the IS-6. This is a terrible shot by me, completely fluffing it. No, I bounce him, so there you go. Just got the WT left. I'm not going to load, well I do load the HE, but he's behind some some buildings there and he's behind those pile of bricks. I'm not going to be able to smack him. Um, that's all we're going to do in this game. But you can see how the Conqueror really does thrive in certain positions. I think it's a great tank. Admittedly, some people don't like it, some people don't get on with it. It is down as the worst performing tier 9 heavy, which to be honest with you, does surprise me because it isn't that bad. Like most of the British tanks, it is technically difficult to play. That I completely get and I completely understand. Ephelum there does 3,223 in his little Conqueror. And you see between us, we get four kills and we do pretty nicely. The game, I'm happy with that game. So that's been the Conqueror and I've been Fujit. Again, as I say, it's a technically difficult tank. All the British tanks realistically are quite difficult to play. They, they, they require a little bit of skill. And that's not saying I've got the skills. It's just saying that to play these tanks well and to get the best out of them, then you do need to have your wits about you. They're not the easiest tanks to play. They're some of the hardest. But if you know how to play them and you get on with them, they're actually beautiful tanks. They've got great DPM, great reload, a fantastic gun. They're not too shabby on their maneuverability. They just have armor issues. And all the British tanks, to an extent, have armor issues. And one of the problems I see with the player base is that they just stick these tanks in the wrong place. Because they have this perception, oh, it's a heavy tank, and being a heavy tank, I can just stick it on, you know, wherever I want to, because I've got the armor, when that is actually not the case. So remember, guys, this one is a ridgeline fighter, even though it's only got seven degrees of gun depression. And in order to be an effective ridgeline fighter, you need to know your maps and your positions. And I say it like a broken record, I admit, time and time again, play the tank initially to its weaknesses. Then, and only then, can you play it to its strengths. Because if you start playing this tank to its strengths, which is that a fantastic gun, you are going to get wrecked. Remember, your HP needs to be protected at all costs. It is an invaluable resource because once it's gone, you cannot get it back. Unlike all the other resources you have on your tank, for example, all your modules, your crew damage, and etc., etc., those can be restored with various first aid kits and restoration packs and track repair kits. Your HP cannot. So protect your HP more than anything else. Anyway, as I said, that's been the Conqueror. The tier 9 British heavy tank. That is the worst performing heavy tank currently in the game, apparently, according to Blitzstars. By all means, comment and everything below, because I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. And until the next time, guys, just remember it's only a game, yeah? So stay safe out there, have fun on the battlefield, and happy tanking. Because at the end of the day, that really is what it's all about. Having fun and being happy.